You're listening to the Way of TBL's official podcast, Truth Talks with Sam and Alex. Join us as we explore all things truth, beauty, and love. Welcome, friends. Today's topic of conversation is the benefits of conscious living. Yeah, because we... We live most of our lives operating on autopilot and we grow completely unaware of our own subconscious thinking and behaving. And I know for myself and I'm sure many others feel this way as well at times that you were just living, you were just existing and not actually living. And so choosing to live a conscious lifestyle is choosing to be intentional and living life on your terms. Yeah, because really, up until that moment, you're living in a way that is normal to you, in a way that you have been accustomed to living up until that moment. But there's an undercurrent, a feeling of something being off. You're not really living to your fullest. You're not living in exactly precisely the way in which you want to be living and there is a freedom and a power in that that is nearly indescribable and feels so damn good and that's why conscious living is so important that's why it can really transform our lives on every level in every way yeah absolutely you know we we wonder at times why things are are constantly happening in our lives that are not planned for, that we don't want, or we are unsatisfied with. And we are failing to see the lessons that are trying to be brought to us that will help us to live more intentional lives. And yeah, becoming, becoming conscious is really becoming very present right it's becoming very present with ourselves and with our environment as a whole yeah again because up until that moment you're you're just running on autopilot like samantha had mentioned Mm -hmm. you're doing things habitually and in going through the motions you don't take the time to pause and reflect and it's when you do that that everything becomes extremely clear to you That's what really affected so many people throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. When everything came to a grinding halt, people were able to do what exactly? They were able to do just that. Whether they liked it or not, that's why a lot of people were stressed out. A lot of people fell into depression because of that forced grinding to a halt. They had to take time to pause and reflect on what their life looked like. All of the things that they were dissatisfied with, all of the things that they worried about on a subconscious level just came to the forefront when they had to pause and reflect on their life and the way in which they were living. A lot of people loved that they were able to take that time to pause and reflect. Oh, I know I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and that's that's exactly what happened for people like us. People who had that extra time, space, mm-hmm. and energy to reflect on how we were living our lives and how we could take even more of our own agency, how we could yeah. reclaim even more of our own power. And That's right because it's like yeah. who are you? without all these external things that define who you are. Who are you outside of your job? Who are you outside of the role that you lead in your life? If you strip all of that away, what are you left with? Exactly. And when we live on autopilot uh, completely unconsciously, these are things that we don't know about ourselves. I know I didn't know many things about myself and it really took a lot of introspection and self-reflection to be like, right, Sam, <laughs> how do you want to live life? Because this isn't it. <laughs> this isn't it. I, I am doing what I believe I should be doing, 
but how is this really truly benefiting me and benefiting my children to really live a life that isn't aligned because it wasn't yeah you know when we when we are out of alignment which is typically living unconsciously right not really being present with uh, our life and ourselves we we just think that there are certain things that we should do and i know for myself i was in an unhappy marriage and i had these beliefs that i had to remain in this marriage because it was, was the right thing to do for my children and i came to realize that that's not true because my children deserve to see me happy i should be a role model for them showing them how to take ownership for their own lives and their own happiness and that's not by just succumbing to my circumstances in a false belief thinking that it's going to benefit them and i really had to step back and understand all of this and separating was the best thing for me to do because I was able to really, truly become my true self. I was able to let go of these limiting beliefs and attachments that held me into a relationship that wasn't right for me. And as a result, my daughters have become uh, so free within themselves as well. Our relationship as mother and daughter has flourished and I can see the ways that they already at the age of seven and 12, are choosing to live life the way they want to. And they are really, you know, making choices that they want to make and not because they are told that they have to make these choices and decisions. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a beautiful thing to observe. And one of our fellow wisdomers, I believe his name is John Lewis. He goes by Lewis Squad um, Mm -hmm. Wisdom. He asked us, what tips we had to share with regards to conscious living and it's in these first two tips taking time to be present to pause and reflect and setting the proper intentions for how you want to live your life that you create the necessary space to get the most out of that process of self-inquiry self-reflection and self-discovery and that process in itself is worthy of another truth talk on its own but it is in that process where we're able to take a clear look at how we're doing things and start moving in the direction we really want to go it's taking our life in the direction we really want for it to and this has such an amazing effect on our self-esteem, our self-belief, our self-confidence. And that it also has, reduces yeah. stress and anxiety yes. from our life. I was just because... about to say that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the way in which it affects our stress levels, our ability to effectively handle anxiety and the internal peace we yeah. get from doing so is unmatched. It's invaluable. And everyone else around us feels that, including our children. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. When we, when we choose to live intentionally, you know, that's choosing to live consciously. Everybody around us is positively affected by that, because it's like, what? Why can she? Why can he do everything that they've always wanted to do, but I don't feel confident enough to do that. I have to stay in a job that I'm not happy in. I have to stay in a marriage that I'm not happy in because it's the right thing to do. (laughs) Exactly. Or why does this person feel the freedom to express themselves the way they do? You know, yesterday we were watching Bill Hicks and he (laughs) is such an incredible comedian. Some argue one of, one of, if not the best comedian of all time. Mm. And he just had such a level of consciousness and awareness yeah. of his sovereignty of himself that like the best of them, they don't fear what other people think. They're mm-hmm. not concerned with 
how other people will be affected by what they have to say. They simply tell the truth in the most hilarious way. And that's why the best comedians are so good. It's because they have the freedom. They give themselves the authority and the freedom to say whatever it is that they want, however they want. They have that power. They've reclaimed that power because they are living their life consciously. They're living their life aware. That's right. They they have conviction. You know, he has conviction in himself. And he knows what is to be true for him. And no matter what anybody can throw at you, you see, this is the thing, when you you don't feel the need to defend yourself anymore. You know, many times when we are operating out of a, yeah, when we're operating out of a unconscious belief, we feel the need to have to defend it. Or we even take things very personally when somebody doesn't agree with that said perspective right yeah we see this many times especially with people um that are very religious right they seem to get very offended when you have anything that goes against their way of thinking yeah you know and they yeah Mm -hmm. and they just feel the need to explain themselves like i just said you know when you care what other people think when you feel that you should do things a certain way or that you need or you have these responsibilities or this this duty to be or act in a certain way and when you do things contrary to that you feel the need to explain yourself when you take full responsibility full accountability and ownership of your life you you don't feel the need to explain yourself to anyone any longer people that are willing to understand where you're coming from will and it's as simple as that it is we we spoke of a great analogy previously in regards to the territory and the map yeah say that one for us yeah explain that one out (laughs) yeah we were talking before hopping on with regards to how the map is not the territory and that's that's also another topic for another day but in essence Mm -hmm. the map is not the territory and what that means is understanding that a map is someone else's understanding of what the territory looks like but when you reclaim your own spiritual psychological and emotional sovereignty you start to feel into the territory for yourself and you carve your own path. Some of the greatest philosophers and minds in history, like Ralph Waldo Emerson, Robert Mm -hmm. Frost, these, these writers, these poets, they expressed the value of carving our own path of going the road, not taken. And that's what that's all about. It's all about feeling into the territory for yourself, looking out and seeing what's in front of you and taking your own steps as opposed to following someone else's map. And with regards to religion, it's like using MapQuest, whereas our spirituality and feeling into what's true in our spirit is a gps a gps allows for you to take detours and then recalculate the route to take you to your destination spirituality allows for you to say oh you know what i want to make a quick stop to this restaurant because i feel like eating (laughs) whereas MapQuest is specific rules specific steps to get to your destination without any deviation whatsoever And yet you won't experience the power of that until you start to live consciously, until you start to live more mindfully and self-aware of how you want to do things. Until you start setting your own intentions and you start clarifying what your values and your principles are for the way you want to live. Yeah, and it's, it's living aligned with those values and principles. And 
the other great thing that we experience as well is the more self-aware we become and the more present we are, the more we are also able to see other people for who they are. And um, this yeah. is probably one of the best, mm -hmm. it is huge, it's one of the best things that comes of conscious living because you can no longer be manipulated. People can no longer try to trick you Just let that sink in. <laughs> doing things. Yeah. yeah. When you know how Truly you want to live your life, you will no longer be gaslit. When mm -hmm. your sense of reality is grounded in your spirit and what you know to be true, you will no longer fall into the trap of gaslighting. And that is a massive, massive topic as well. Because no one will be able to tell you, oh man, you're crazy. Like, what? <laughs> how can you say that? Or how can you exactly. feel that way about etc. X, Y, Z? No, you know where you're coming from. Your level of self-awareness will continue guiding you in the way of truth, beauty, and love. And that's all that really matters to you anymore. The more in which you elevate your consciousness, the quality of your awareness, the less you will question yourself and the less you will allow for other people to question you. Instead, you're going to see how you trigger other people and how to tell the difference between someone who is genuine and someone who isn't, someone who is willing to learn and someone who just wants to continue justifying and validating their way of life even though you can clearly see that they're coming from a place of fear and not from a place of love that is what conscious even, living enables you to do yeah and being able to know who is connecting with you genuinely and who's connecting with you because they're seeking to get something from you. Take advantage of you. You can completely, yeah. yeah, take advantage of you. You can completely see through all of those things because you have this level of awareness for yourself. And it's, it's truly amazing. And because of that, we also experience such incredible connections with those that are aligned with us. Yeah. With those who are you know, who, who have the same vision for life as we do. We may not always, you know, have the same perspectives on everything with everyone. And that's okay because, you know, we are, of course, all individual, you know, people. <laughs> We're not yeah. all going to have the same wants and desires in life, but we are still able to communicate with truth. We are able to just communicate openly and not feel personally attacked when somebody else has a different perspective yeah. and that is really that's a really unique thing to find in people because you will see that people will only continue connecting with you for as long as you have the same ideology as they do exactly as soon as you are like hold on actually i see things in a different way when they are so stuck on those beliefs that they have, they just can't accept you for who you are. Yeah. And living consciously is accepting everything as is. You accept people for who they are and you see them for who they truly are, <laughs> yeah. whether they exactly. are aware of it or not. Right. Yeah. And when you live consciously, you're comfortable with the fact that that will happen more and more and you will be less and less surprised when people fail to <laughs> continue moving along the path of pursuing consciousness of pursuing the elevation <laughs> of their self-awareness increasing the quality of their <laughs> self-awareness because they allow for certain triggers to get in their way you will be less surprised when that happens because the deeper you go into conscious living the deeper you go into spirituality the less people will resonate with you and that's okay everyone has to face their own challenges everyone has to learn what they need to learn at their own time 
at the appointed time and not a moment later. Absolutely. And we're always attracting those that are aligned with us, right? All people that come into our life really are a mirror of us. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, every, every person we connect with is an opportunity to grow. However, see, that's, that's what we fail to see when we are living on autopilot and living unconsciously, because when you live consciously, you can, you can see how all these people and all these experiences have, have come to help you to grow. Exactly. And so you, you will find in your life that it begins with an internal whisper, right? And you can either choose to listen to that whisper. And I think we were also saying the more we, the more we exercise that muscle of being present and being conscious, the stronger that ability becomes yeah. just like with anything that we, that we learn, right? The more you exercise that ability, the easier it is to, to be able to do it. And so really living consciously is understanding that we are continuously growing because really there's no, there's no end destination of consciousness, right? We're never just going to be like, all right, I'm conscious now. That's it. The journey ends. Right. <laughs> Uh, no, it, it is a long life pursuit and everything comes to teach us. And so basically, I guess it's, it's stopping living in fear and wondering why are these things continuously occurring to me and coming to see what lesson is trying to come through to you. So you see, the more you ignore, the louder it's going to knock. Yeah. You know, and many times we see people reach a state of having a near death experience to come up and be like, oh my God, like I really see the truth now and become a completely different person to who they were before that experience, right? Because they, they realize that you could be gone in an instant and life is over and all these hangups that you had before, do they really matter? How important are all these things that you put so much importance on? Yeah. And you'll see the same with, with elderly people that are on their deathbed, unfortunately, but it comes to that point where they have, may have been such a bitter and angry person for such a long time. And then you see them at the end of their life become such soft people because they have let go of all these things that they had suppressed for so long. You know, they, all of these attachments, they, all of these yeah. attachments that they've held so tightly yeah. onto throughout their lives. And that is, <laughs> that is the defining quality of consciousness. It is this mm -hmm. softness, this lightness, this tenderness that comes mm -hmm. with just accepting everything because whether you like it or not, that is what our mortality reveals to us. Is that yeah. we must accept everything as it is in the same way we must accept our own death. When we die before we die, when we have the experience of letting go of controlling the way in yeah. which we feel we need for life to go for how life must play out for us when we let go of control we are really experiencing that sensation of dying we're experiencing our mortality in the here and now and we're able to become more open to the possibilities of life once we do we really tap into that flow of the universe don't we because yeah exactly when we hold on to these attachments and beliefs that are ultimately not serving us, we are cutting off that flow. We are choosing, it is a choice, I'll say that again, <laughs> we are choosing to not grow and to remain stagnant. And as scary as it may seem initially to let go of these things that are holding us back, there is so much peace that comes with letting go 
And then you think, oh my God, why didn't I do that sooner? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What was I afraid of for so long that I couldn't take that leap of faith, right? Yeah. And actually, and most people experience that at death, unfortunately. They do. But that doesn't yeah. need to be our experience. Not at all. Not at all. You know what? Every day, every moment presents you with the opportunity to make that choice. Yeah. And it will begin with having practices, right? You will incorporate practices into your life and we'll go into those in, in a moment. Um, but it's in practicing and reminding yourself of, you know, being present in the moment right now. So you have that choice to be present and to choose you. And that can begin at any time. And it yeah. won't be Why not now? a constant to begin with. Why not now, right? What are we waiting for? <laughs> there is only the now. There is only the now. That's right. And There's slowly, nobody. slowly, you will begin to incorporate these, these lessons. You will begin to uh, integrate them and you will begin to embody them. And then you will see that you are just naturally living consciously. And that doesn't mean that something within your subconscious might not pop up here and there but by having that awareness and presence you are able to see it for what it is and instead of reacting to our environment we begin responding huge difference and that's really you know yeah taking that step back and reflecting before we make any rash decisions yeah again when yeah. you live mindfully when you live with presence you're able to before reacting off mm -hmm. the cuff you're able to yeah. have the ability to take a step back pause reflect and respond appropriately and effectively to what is happening in your immediate experience you won't get triggered you will take stock of what's happening and move forward in the best way you in might the get absolute triggered. best way possible. <laughs> but you might get triggered, but you understand where that trigger is come from. Exactly. Right? Because <laughs> you were in that growth mindset. Doesn't mean we're never going to get triggered again. Right. But you won't react to your triggering. You will understand that you were being triggered because clearly there is something here that is still unresolved for you. Exactly. And, and yeah, like we we build our emotional intelligence at the same time. We separate ourselves from the emotion. We don't just become that emotion, we see it for what it is and we, we try to understand it and learn the lesson from it. And because- What is this trying to tell me about yeah, myself? Yeah. Exactly, and because emotions are energy in motion, mm -hmm as opposed to identifying ourselves with that emotion, yeah. we allow it to simply flow through us. We observe it, we learn from it, and we let it go. Yeah, love it. <laughs> and so going into practices then for conscious living, a very, like, like we already mentioned, I guess mindfulness is the very first one, is at every moment that you can, Try to be mindful. Step back, reflect, and just think. Quiet the external noise that is around you and think for yourself. Yes. And mindfulness can be applied to everything, <laughs> yeah. right? Literally to everything. Yeah. Everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's right. And when you do that, you take the essence of your meditations, of your meditative practice, be it yoga or sitting in silence, whatever form you resonate with most, you take the essence of that practice and you apply it throughout the day. That's really the reason we meditate. It's not so that we perform the practice it's so that we take the essence of that practice we use these practices as tuning forks for what we want to feel throughout the day 
that's really where the power of meditation comes into practice. Yeah. That's what mindfulness is all and it's, about. We, yeah, so that it's we realizing live that. Mindfully. Sorry, <laughs> go on. Yeah, so that we live mindfully. Mm -hmm. Now I was just going to say how it's also being mindful that practices are tools and not to attach yourself to any said practice. So that, that comes with integrating and embodying the essence of that practice because somebody may have a meditation practice that they do every morning, but then forget to be mindful the rest of the day. Yeah. You know, it's not about attaching yourself to these practices. It's meant to become a part of who you are. You know, another one is practicing gratitude. I know that was a huge one for me initially. And I, I think back now and I think, my gosh, how could I not, how could I not know what I was grateful for? But there was a time where I wasn't grateful. I mean, I was, but I wasn't conscious of it. I wasn't, I, I remember having to think about, okay, so what am I grateful for today? <laughs> right? Um, however, that is a really great starting point though, when you don't live with a lot of gratitude in your life, if you want to experience more gratitude, you need to practice gratitude. Yeah, and so exactly. that may begin by, like you said, journaling or even just being mindful of it, but practicing gratitude daily is another great way of just getting into that flow of that kind of energy, right? Feeling yeah. peaceful, feeling at ease, knowing that there are good things in your life. And you may not even be yeah. aware of how they have served you. That's mm -hmm. really the power of gratitude. Gratitude, when you take it full circle, it allows for you to see that in reality, everything serves you. Absolutely every single experience, pleasant and unpleasant, serve your continual evolution. Yeah. I remember when Samantha had pointed out to me how integral my childhood as one of Jehovah's Witnesses was. And after I had cultivated and developed my own identity as an individual after making the decision to separate myself from that religious community i had completely forgotten about all the different ways i actually grew as a person in that religion i would give public talks in front of dozens of people hundreds of people at one point and I learned so many skills when it came to communication, when it came to having conversations with other people, when it came to connecting with people. I enjoyed that the most out of my entire experience as a member of Jehovah's Witnesses. I was a very involved member. And so I loved just meeting random people and connecting with them, talking with them, getting to know them. And I just forgot how incredible incredible of an experience that was how valuable my experiences were and I just dismissed what came of all that until Samantha had acknowledged it to me it's like Alex well hold up hold on a minute like you realize that you learn to be as open and as vulnerable and as good a conversationalist as you are because of your experiences mm -hmm. don't separate your, yourself from what you learned yeah. it's not all bad it wasn't all bad and that's what gratitude allows for us to do it allows for us to reframe all of these suppressed mm -hmm. negative experiences that we we have framed in our in our subconscious minds as negative experiences even the worst of experiences the worst of traumas when we become present, when we become still, and we allow for us to think and feel just how these experiences developed us as people, made us stronger, made us more resilient. That That is the power yeah. of gratitude when we take it full circle. It's not just about it really, it helps us, relishing in it the helps goodness us and the pleasantness of our experiences. Yeah. It's taking 
what was really unpleasant and making that unpleasant experience a positive opportunity That's right. and it it helps us to also forgive forgiveness yeah. is huge and forgiveness comes through having gratitude for everything really you end up having gratitude for an experience that was unpleasant however you know and many times people hold grudges and they they hold on to things they have resentment and you realize that forgiveness isn't about the other person it's about you because when you hold on to things and you can't forgive you're suppressing that within yourself it really has no effect on the other person whatsoever they probably couldn't care less whether you forgive them or not <laughs> it's not about forgiving for them it's about forgiving yourself for being in that kind of situation to begin with. Exactly. And, that, and having gratitude for what you learned. Yeah. Yeah. Having gratitude for what you learned and allowing yourself to have peace. It's not about forgiving them. It's about giving yourself peace. And in yeah. forgiving, in accepting what was, you allow peace to enter into your life. And you become open to what can be. Absolutely. And that's why we you know, we created the course that we created because we want to help individuals in their own self-transformation journeys. We saw how beneficial it was for us, you know, in in learning to become a conscious individual and live a conscious lifestyle it is a process of self-transformation yes yeah and that's what this course is all about it's all about helping those who perhaps don't know where to start right mm -hmm. it's getting them on yeah. the right track putting their best foot forward on this journey and taking these principles that we introduce in each module to yeah. start transforming their sense of self, their sense of self-confidence, their self-belief, and mm -hmm. taking their life in the direction they finally want for it to go, according to their terms, their conditions, and experiencing the power that comes from doing so. Yeah. It's taking, taking well, authority yeah. over yourself. Right? Yeah. That is the main essence of conscious living, is taking back your own authority and ownership over your own life. Yes. Your and you will thank yourself for doing it every single mm -hmm. day. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. truly life changing. And like we said, that's just the start. That's really only the yeah. beginning. It's a way of life. We will always mm -hmm. be in pursuit of living with higher levels of truth, beauty, and love. We are yeah. those that walk in the way of TBL which is our brand, mm -hmm. the way of truth, beauty, and yeah. love. It's a way of life. And we all experience it in our own unique way. We contribute our own unique perspective with each other. We share it with each other. And that is what enriches our life. But it's just the beginning. Once we embark on the path of living more consciously, living more mindfully, mm -hmm. we attract mm -hmm. the right kind of person into our life that serves as our complement and that's what our yeah. next episode will be on our next talk will be on the power of conscious relationships and how that person serves as our mirror i know samantha <laughs> has served as my mirror when it comes to my flaws my imperfections as a man and you know it's beautiful to have experienced how my consciousness as a man inspired her and when she leveled up she was like hold up you got some stuff to work on, brother. <laughs> you need to work on this and this and that. And it's like, oh. But it's, it's so beautiful. Well, that's, that's new. <laughs> that's different. But yeah. I'm and really choosing, better for it. Choosing, absolutely. And choosing this way of life opens up an entire other universe to you that you wouldn't have. And you could have never imagined. Existed. No. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely.
I love it. So that and is what our next we would love will to. Be on. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, continue, continue. Now I was just going to say how we would love to in invite people to come and speak with us as a guest on our podcast. We really want to engage with our community and speak about life lessons that they have learnt as yeah. well. And, That's the best part of wisdom, have, honestly. It could have a, oh, absolutely, just really have a open uh, conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Because as much as we enjoy talking about this kind of stuff, I mean, Samantha and I talk all the time about this kind of stuff. You know, we brainstorm about the things we want to talk about with you guys, but we want to hear what you guys have to say. We want to hear you guys' questions. You know, send us questions you want answers to. You want to hear our perspective on. You know, we, we welcome you guys to. But yeah, let us know what you guys would like to talk about. And there's a form on our website when you go to thewavetbl.com slash podcast there's a section where you can fill out that form and just let us know what you guys would like to talk about with us and we'll do an episode on it we, we really look forward to that we do we do so yeah right, thanks for joining said, us yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you for joining us it's been awesome thank you all for tuning in we appreciate you joining us and until next time May you embody the way of TBL today in your own way.